Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I have some great tips for you on how to do a budget prepper haul for food storage items. Stock up your prepper pantry. If you're new to prepping, it isn't expensive. It doesn't cost a lot of money to begin prepping. You can add one little basic food at a time. And as you gather your foods together, you'll be able to make more meals, have more food, you'll save money, and you'll find that you're prepared for an uncertain future. Wherever you are in your prepping and you want to have more or you just want to take an inventory, make sure that you have all the basic foods. Here are great suggestions for easy, inexpensive, budget prepper foods that you can add to your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage stockpile. We know all about beans and rice, and yes, a lot of people think that's where you start. I don't necessarily agree that that should be the first thing you have, because if today the power goes out, the water stops running, you run out of money before you run out of month, this is going to be a very difficult thing to start making a meal today. So it's very important that you have dried beans and rice, but don't let it be the only thing that you have, because that could end up being another emergency that you aren't able to prepare them. Add to your prepper pantry with the beans and rice, but don't let it be the only thing you have. An easier way to start with beans and rice is to have cans of beans. You can get flavored beans, chili beans, southwest flavored beans, baked beans, and just regular cans of beans that have already been soaked, cooked, and canned, so you just open the can and they're ready to use. While they're much better if you can heat them up, they don't have to be, so in an emergency, you could still have some basic beans. And you can also have easy to prepare rices, get some rice mixes, even get a package of minute rice because you only need to boil water, add the rice, and then you add it in, cover it and let it sit for a few minutes, and then you have some rice that you could dump in a can of flavorful beans. An inexpensive item to have in your food storage stockpile are varieties of spices. Just the basics of salt, garlic, onion can really jazz up your meals. And that's going to be very important is that you had flavor in your meals. You're more likely to be satisfied and not feel disgruntled or unhappy that you haven't been getting variety in your foods, especially when we've had such an abundance on so many days of our lives that when we need to start cutting back, we still want to add flavor. So even if we're still eating beans and rice, the variety of it can make it seem like we had something different. Next, get a variety of canned vegetables. Look at the ones that you like. It's nice to have fresh, of course, but we don't always have those available. And you can have frozen in your freezer, but if something happens and the power goes out, you can just open a can and then you have something to eat. Find the varieties that you like. Everything from green beans, peas, carrots, mixed vegetables, oh, I don't know, asparagus. There's all kinds of different canned vegetables. Choose the ones that you like. No one in my family likes canned peas, so you don't find those at my house. Don't forget tomatoes. Tomatoes are an awesome way to change up your rice and beans. You can also have pasta, and just with a can of tomato sauce, add in a little bit of your garlic and onion, and you can turn that into an inexpensive spaghetti sauce to add it over some noodles. Pasta noodles are great to store long term also because they will last a long time just like your rice and beans. So my third item that I store a lot of for long term besides the rice and beans is pasta. Simply because it's so simple to prepare, it's versatile and anything you pour over it makes it a completely different meal. Along with your vegetables, you want some varieties of fruits. I have the most problem with canned fruits that the cans don't last. And so one of the things I like to do is buy dried and dehydrated fruits. I also have a dehydrator and I dehydrate some of my own. But those aren't going to last the longest term either. And if you're just starting your prepper pantry, you don't necessarily want to be plotting foods that will last for 30 years. You want foods that can last for a year or two or three because the whole goal of having a prepper pantry is it's a working pantry. You're working your way through it. You should be eating some of these foods, using the foods, rotating and then replacing them so that you have the freshest foods possible in your pantry. You aren't going to go to your prepper pantry food storage stockpile and everything is 10 years old because you've been using rotating and replacing it. The closer you pay attention to the dates on your foods and you try to use it within that amount of time, the better they're going to taste. And yes, those are used by sell by Best Buy and not expiration dates, but it can be. Canned foods can become 
uh, leaky, off-flavored, expired, until they just aren't any good anymore. So don't plan on buying them and putting them away forever because that, that's not a great idea. You might get lucky on some foods, but do you really want to take a chance that you finally have run out of all your opportunities and the only thing you have left in your pantry is food that's no longer good to eat because it rotted away by neglect? Don't let that happen. Use, rotate, and replace your food storage stockpile food items. Look for easy to prepare packaged foods, boxes of spaghetti that has the things in it, but read carefully because you may need to add, say, tomato sauce, tomato paste. Look for mixes that you can turn into big pots of soup or chili. But once again, what do you need to add to those? Make sure that you have them. Macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, nor sides that are rice and pasta, all of those are great foods to have because you can combine them with a few other foods and make an easy to prepare meal with just a little bit of cooking that you can have a meal on the table for your family for not a lot of money. One of the things that I like to do is set aside some of these foods together as a meal in a bag or a shelf meal and I'll put all of the ingredients together for a recipe into a Ziploc bag and then I set it in the pantry and then if I don't know what I want to eat or I just need a meal in a hurry I can pull out one of the bags usually dump it all together in a pot and dinner is ready as soon as it's heated through. So think about what you're going to make with the foods. Don't just buy random foods. Have an idea of how you're going to use them. Open and eat foods are also a fabulous way to start off your prepper pantry, especially on a budget because a lot of these foods are not very expensive. They're ready to eat, already prepared in the can. You can just open it and in an emergency you could just eat it out of the can if you needed to, but they usually taste a lot better if you uh, heat them up. You can also combine some of them together and make really interesting meals. So think about things like ravioli. Think about foods like chili, beef stew. There's so many different kinds of soups. And one of the great things about a can of soup, a can of chili, even the ravioli, whip up some mashed potatoes, some rice, some pasta, and pour your can of soup or ravioli or chili over that basic food so that it helps it go farther. You could turn a can of soup with some cooked rice into a meal for more than one person. It's gonna be more filling and stretch farther so that you get more out of your food storage dollars. It's important that we have protein in our diet. We don't just want to eat beans. We likely want to have some meat. So look at all the different varieties of canned meats. You can pick them up for a dollar or more, up to quite a few dollars for some of the really delicious meats. But if you have not tried canned meats, get one and take it home and try it. If you like it, go back and get more. There's nothing worse than you end up with 12 cans of something that you just don't like and there's hardly any way to even disguise some foods. So you want to have your prepper pantry food search stockpile be full of foods that you enjoy eating. You don't ever want to have a day that your life is messed up and now you have to eat foods that you don't even like. That's not how you want to comfort yourself and get going again and feel better that you can get go forward and make the best of a situation. I'd way rather find a can of ravioli or soup than a can of Spam, but that's up to you. What do you want to find in there? And that's what you should have. Also make sure you have grab and go, open and eat foods, crackers, peanut butter, granola bars, bags of nuts, jerky. There's all kinds of foods that you can just grab and open and eat that don't require any preparation at all. No cooking, no heating up. You can just open it and eat it. Have plenty of those foods. That's usually where you want to start with foods that you could just grab and eat. A lot of emergencies can come on suddenly. An earthquake, you have to evacuate because of a wildfire. There's a hurricane coming. Scoop up your ready to go foods and you can have several days worth of foods that you don't have to worry about having enough to eat and how you're going to prepare it. Do you see why you want to start with those types of foods rather than starting with these? If you had to evacuate because of a coming hurricane, which one would you rather find that you had with you in your car that you could snack on today? One of the best ways to stretch your food dollars is portion control. Figure out how much food do you need for a meal. Then if there's leftovers, make sure you have some sturdy containers that you can seal it up, store it away carefully, and then plan to use those foods. 
don't just push them into the back of the refrigerator until who knows what this package is in the back here somewhere three months later. Plan to use your leftovers so that they're useful to you and you get every penny out of your food dollars, the groceries that you buy, the money that you spend. It's getting harder and harder to find affordable foods. We maybe have had to turn to smaller packages. Maybe we've had to go to buying generic rather than the brands we really enjoy. Maybe we've had to go from store to store because we can't afford the things at some of the grocery stores anymore and we're looking for less expensive options. It's becoming harder and harder to balance the budget for many people. And I was reading that something like 68% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, even people making $100,000 a year. It sounds like we'd be living on easy street. How come those people can't make it? And a lot of it is how you choose to spend your money. So think about your budget. Go back to your budget from ground zero. Start with a blank sheet of paper. Then you add in, build your budget rather than cut your budget. What does it cost to live in your home? What does it cost for your utilities? Basic food, basic transportation. And there you go. You've started your budget and now you know what it actually costs you to live. All of the other stuff are wants and not needs. We need our shelter. We need the lights on, the water running. We need food and we need basic transportation. And if you have anything beyond that and times are tough, that's when you start deciding, can I afford to continue to add this into my budget or do I need to find a way to cut back on this? Times are difficult, but we can do it. Someone told me years ago, the person who needs nothing has the power. If you don't have to rely on someone else for the basics because you have provided those for yourself, you don't have to make choices that are uh, very hurtful to you because you have that power with the ability to take care of yourself. Think about it and what are the things that you really do need and how you can make sure that you have that power in your life. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.